Hello, my name is John Bellucci and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm going to be creating some videos regarding the detailing and painting of small HO gauge 187th scale figures, uh, animals, vehicles, as well as uh, creating some uh, buildings and whatnot from both kits and from scratch build. Uh, this will involve not only, um, you know, live video feeds, but uh, still photos as well, where I can put up some text and show you real up close and personal exactly what it is that I'm doing. Um, I've been fiddling around with model railroads, uh, model railroading since the mid 60s or so. Uh, back then, things were a lot less expensive. So, it, and it was a lot less daunting. Uh, there wasn't a lot of uh, prototypical uh, uh, attention to, you know, uh, uh, the, the the figures and the uh, the trains that we ran. Myself, uh, my layout consists of a simple set of tracks and trains that go around, and I just like watching my trains go around the tracks. I don't uh, have I don't run operations, I don't have timetables. I'm not into it like that. I'm into it as a fun hobby, something just to do with some extra time when I can find it. But what I do enjoy most of all is detailing the little tiny figures that we put into our layouts. True, many of them can be purchased pre-painted and that's great. But even the pre-painted figures can use a little extra detail to make them become individuals. Um, if you look at any of your pre-painted figures now, you'll see that they basically have got no features to their face. Their face is painted one color. And they're all mostly flesh color because, let's face it, they're produced in uh, Germany. And they essentially paint the people that live there. Um, I'm going to show you how to paint not only white folks, but black folks, African American, um, uh, paint the clothing, uh, detail the faces. I'm real big on uh, creating, um, with horses for instance, I like to create horses that I know or have known, especially uh, the horses that were owned by myself and my wife. Um, I like to create uh, characters from television shows that I enjoyed growing up. Um, one of the first that I did was the cast of a show called Long Street, which was back in 1970, 1971. Back then they were simply the Bachman people and they came uh, sort of pre-colored in that they were pink, a flesh tone. Um, and I did up their clothing and whatnot. And at the time, all you had was what was called a paint palette, which was a little round circle of plastic with little dots of, of paint, little paint tablets around the edge. And you use a solvent to liquefy them, and then you apply that paint to your figures. Uh, I still have those figures. I found them not too long ago. They're really dusty. They're really dirty. They've been around for about 37 years. Um, the other thing I, I, I'm going to be doing, I'm going to demonstrate on how to um, take apart uh, the motor vehicles that we use, cars, trucks, and whatnot. And uh, like I said, the thing about now, nowadays, is these the cars were expensive when they were new, but they're now that many of them are out of production, they're even more expensive when you find one. So sometimes there's a little trepidation about taking things apart. Um, I know I was leery the first time I drilled into a die cast car to take the top from the bottom and remove it. Uh, why would you do these things? One, because it's cool that you can. Two, if you want to add drivers and or passengers in your vehicles, you need to take them apart. And taking the body apart from the chassis is a lot easier than trying to cut the doors and windows out of these little vehicles. Okay, so that's one of the reasons I do it. I'm going to be demonstrating this with the, uh, the Atlas Masterpiece uh, uh, Wrangler Jeeps. 
Um, I'm going to be turning um, a die-cast Wrangler Jeep, if I can get hold of one, into the Jeep Commando, which was a vehicle back in the early, actually it was in the mid-60s to early 70s. It looked like a cross between the Jeep and the German thing, where the entire back end of the vehicle was on an angle. And I want to recreate that because I like the look of the vehicle. Um, I've experimented with a couple of, uh, I used the Viking thing with a uh, Roco Jeep front, and it's okay, but it's a little small. Uh, but I'll be showing how to do these things on camera in, uh, you know, uh, a, a live recorded uh, session. Um, there's a lot of things that I'd like to share with people that I've, I've learned, and I've learned these mostly through the Model Railroad magazines. Model Railroad magazine, Model Railroad Craftsman magazine. There have been books published over the years. Uh, some of the earliest books uh, are really outdated, but the information contained in them as to de the importance of detailing your figures and putting figures into scenes. I've always felt that was important. I also enjoy creating the scenery. I like to make my own trees. I do some knockout looking pine trees and I'll show how I do uh, my methods for producing the pine trees that I, that I produce. I'm gonna show those methods. Um, uh, you can see behind me, there's, 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 there's quite a bit of foliage on my property. We've got six and a half acres of wooded, property so there's lots of lots of branches to be had and and lots of uh, ingredients for the basis of, of of trees and whatnot in miniature uh, i've also become very impressed with the new static grasses so i'll be applying groundwork with static grass back in my day when i was growing up and playing with trains and let's face it playing with trains is what we did and I still refer to it that way. No offense meant to those model railroaders who have timetables and whatnot, but like I say, that I'm, I'm not into that part of it. But all we had back then was, was the pre-colored sawdust. We had green for grass and brown for dirt, and that was it. Uh, some of us got more creative, like myself. We went out and got sand and uh, dug dirt up and dried it in ovens. Well, you know, when we were alone in the house, we dried things in the oven, but, um, and then set them out and to make them look as realistic as possible. Back then, when I was younger, I carved an entire circus. Um, all of the performing lions and whatnot were all carved. There was no prizer back then. There was a, a company called Wardy J and they made uh, cast metal. Uh, uh, probably back then they were probably lead castings, elephants and, uh, lions and uh, ringmasters and such and they had little wooden uh, kits for the circus wagons which nowadays you can find them made in plastic and of course prizer you gotta love them they make everything uh, all kind of animals all kind of people um, they make vehicles they make all kind of kits uh, that's another thing uh, back then uh, when i was starting out in this a large kibri train station which is a company in germany you could get a large large beautiful train station for like two or three dollars now if you can find them on ebay you'll pay you will pay well over a hundred dollars for the same kit they've since released the one kit that i was interested in and it is about eighty dollars now new still quite a price increase from back when i was you know, 13, 14, 15 years old. But um, I'm going to show building some kits. I'm going, to, I'm going to be building kits that are no longer in production because I have them and because I like the buildings. I'll be kit bashing some of them, uh, turning them from what they are into something else that I want them to be. I'll be showing some scratch building uh, using some of the commercially available uh, products, uh, some of the commercially available uh, brick faces, brick fronts, um, as well as using some that I'm going to create with my own molds uh, out of polystyrene resin. Uh, they're not going to be, they're not any thicker, but uh, I'll be able to control what color I make them and whatnot. 
Um, I've also molded some roof sections because I've not been able to find what I'm looking for in uh, the evergreen styrene sheets, for example. I know there are others out there. I've just not been able to find exactly what I'm looking for, so I created my own. And I'll be making molds of them and then assembling them and showing you how to work with uh, cast resin pieces. Um, I don't know how long all these videos will take. I don't know if I'll get to every subject that I want to do, but I'm going to give it my best shot. And I invite you to come along with me on this journey. Um, I hope it's a lot of fun. I know it's going to be intense as far as the craftsmanship goes and whatnot, but um, uh, it's what I enjoy doing. I really don't call it fun anymore. At, at 58, it's not so much fun as it is, uh, it's, it's more intense. And it's, I just want to show myself that I can still do these things and do them better than I did when I was 14. So um, with that in mind, that's my introduction. Um, I hope uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to create videos that you're going to enjoy watching. And um, all we can do is give it my best shot and hope that I make the audience happy. So that's what I'm going to do. So uh, come on along. Wish me luck. I think it'll be fun.